They had to vote out uh, by two-thirds vote uh, a proposition to get it on the ballot uh, that would uh, reduce uh, your property taxes. And then you all, people in this room and people across the state, voted in favor of that constitutional amendment. And as a result, your school district property taxes will go down every year going forward instead of just being frozen. We also protect the seniors from both physical as well as financial abuse. We passed the Three Strikes Nursing Home Law that will make it easier to revoke a nursing home license if abuse or neglect occurs. And we enhance reporting of financial exploitation of seniors giving them greater protection against things like fraud and abuse. And I want to make clear this. I'm running for re-election to take additional steps to protect our seniors in Texas. To do that, we will deliver this compact with seniors that I'll be signing shortly. And in that compact, it will work to lower your cost of living, increase your safety, and improve services for your needs. You know, unfortunately, Fraud and elder abuse is still on the rise. That's wrong, and we will not allow it to happen in Texas. <laughs> Under my compact with seniors, Texas will increase penalties for crimes against seniors. Not only for crimes like violent crimes, but also for scams and schemes that target our seniors. We will authorize the Texas Attorney General to take legal action against criminals who prey upon our seniors. Now, supporting our seniors also means protecting them from the burden of property taxes. Now, I've already mentioned what we did in the past on property taxes. Now, I want, to, I want to tell you what is in my compact with seniors. Currently, seniors have an extra $10,000 homestead exemption if they apply for it. But the fact is that too many seniors either don't know about it or they don't know how to apply for it. Under my compact, we're going to fix that. Under my compact, Texas will automatically enroll all senior homeowners to receive the additional homestead exemption. That will begin the process of lowering your property taxes even more. <laughs> Additionally, and understand the nuance here, Additionally, Texas seniors already have a freeze on your school district property taxes. My compact would expand that by further reducing your property taxes by also freezing your county property taxes. So this would cap the county property taxes at the current level for the rest of your lives. That will ensure that no senior will be taxed out of their home. Now my compact also helps seniors with the cost of living. The compact reduces government fees and will provide a website to inform seniors about state discounts that are available to you that you may have no idea exists. And under my compact, Texas will expand the 211 hotline to increase awareness about all services that are available to Texas seniors. So that's going to be the compact that I'm going to be working with Candy Noble and Angela Paxson, members of the legislature, to make sure that we get passed, to make sure that the lives of seniors are better. Before I sign the compact, however, let me bring you up to date on a couple of other things that we're working on for you, as well as for all Texans. First, I'm running for re-election to keep Texas the number one state in America for jobs and economic opportunity. CEOs who run businesses have named Texas the number one state for business for 18 years in a row. There is an award that goes out called the Governor's Cup that goes to the state that ranks number one for economic development. Texas has won that award as the basis, best state in America for economic development every year that I have been your governor. <laughs> this past May, something happened for the first time ever. For the first time ever, Texas is now home to the headquarters of more Fortune 500 companies than any other state in the United States of America. 
Mr. Moser, big businesses, I want you to know that most businesses in Texas are actually small businesses. About 90% of all businesses in Texas are small businesses. And I'm proud to tell you that Texas ranks as the number one state in America to start a small business. So when you add all this together, let me give you these facts. Over, since you last elected me to be your governor, no state has added more new jobs than the great state of Texas. But most importantly is what this really means to the bottom line. What it means to the bottom line is this, and that is a, 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 a job is something far more than a statistic. There are families here in your community as well as communities across our state where there are more people able to earn a livelihood that will allow them to buy a home or buy a car or better provide for their family. And as we gather here today, there are more Texans with a job than ever before in the history of our great state. So uh, along with economic expansion, there are benefits that come along with that. One of the economic benefits that has arisen because of, of our prolific and prosperous economy that we have is that as we gather today, Texas is sitting on a record-breaking budget surplus of $27 billion. And whose money is that? You are exactly right. And so here's what I want to do with that money. Obviously, we want to invest in healthcare. We want to invest in our schools. We want to invest in our infrastructure. But because this is your money that we're talking about in our savings account, I want to return at least half of that money to you with the largest property tax cut ever in the history of Texas. <laughs> In my discussion about the compact with seniors, I talked about public safety, and public safety is paramount. You gotta be safe in your neighborhood. You gotta be safe in your community. And there's something that's happened in the United States that has eroded that safety. It's called the defund the police movement. You saw it happen in Minneapolis. You've seen it in Chicago. You've seen it in New York and Los Angeles and Seattle and Portland. And wherever you've seen it, you've seen crime increase, you've seen chaos reign. Uh, and what do you know? Uh, even a Texas city did something like that. And you know there's always one in Texas. It's Austin, Texas. So uh, Austin, Texas defunded their police by more than $100 million. And so I worked with Candy, I worked with Angela, and the Republicans stood up this last session and we said, not under our watch will we allow our law enforcement officers to be defunded in the state of Texas. In Texas, we support our law enforcement officers, and that's why uh, they passed and I signed a law that will defund any city or county that defunds their law enforcement. We will introduce that. Now, I know that uh, between now and November the 8th, you're going to be visiting with friends, and you know some uh, may be wondering why they should support Abbott as opposed to his opponent. And let's, let's be clear about something with regard to public safety. Remember this. When, when Beto ran for president, he embraced the defunded police movement. He's on tape saying that he supported dismantling the police, and he wanted to make sure uh, that he was going to go down that defunded police movement. And it's not surprising because he got a million dollar check from George Soros, who's done more than anybody else to defund law enforcement in our country. If you want your community safe, I need not only your vote, but other people to vote for me to make sure that we will not allow somebody to come into the governor's office and defund police, but instead we will fully support law enforcement officers in the Lone Star State. <laughs> the only thing that's more dangerous than defunding the police is the chaos that's been caused by the Biden administration by having these open border policies allowing people into our country. So uh, never forget, it was just two years ago we had the lowest number of border crossings in decades, and that was because of all the policies that were put in place by President Trump. 
when Biden came into office, he eliminated all of those policies. And as we gather here today, there is a record number of people coming across the border illegally. Already, in this fiscal year that began last October 1st, and so we have one more month left in this fiscal year, but already this fiscal year alone, more than 2 million people have come across the border illegally, which shatters all records. But it gets worse, because just get this number of people who have come across the border who are identified as being on the terrorist watch list. There are 81 people who have come across the border under the Biden administration on the terrorist watch list. Everybody comes across the border. They pay money to the cartels to get across the border. Most of them want to just turn themselves into the border patrol. But if you're on the terrorist watch list, you pay even more money to make sure that you're not caught. And so we know of 81 terrorists or, or people on the terrorist watch list who have come across the border. What we do not know is how many were on that watch list who paid more to the cartels and successfully evaded capture who posed an existential threat to our country. President Biden has abandoned his oath of office. And here's what we need to do. When we win these elections and when Republicans take over Congress, the first thing they need to do is to fire Nancy Pelosi. The second thing they need to do is to impeach the Secretary of Homeland Security, Mayorkas. The third thing they need to do is to reimburse the state of Texas for all the money that we are incurring to do. And then they need to make sure that the only budget that Joe Biden gets is going to be a budget that fully funds Border Patrol, fully funds ICE, fully funds it, building the border wall, and doing the federal government's job to secure our border. about what we're doing on the border because uh, we have National Guard who are turning back and repelling people from coming across the border. Those who make it past the National Guard, we have Texas Department of Public Safety officers arresting them. And, and we're also building barriers, whether it be the wall that we're building today or uh, the razor wire that we put up to prevent people from coming in. But as you probably noticed on watching on TV, uh, there are a lot of people coming in and they go directly to land that is owned or occupied or controlled by the federal government. And what the federal government does, they have the Border Patrol process the papers of the people who came across the border, and then they're dumping them off uh, into small communities like Del Rio, Texas. Well, I was down there months ago, actually back in April, and I was in a meeting in a room about this size with uh, had mayors and sheriffs and county judges and uh, other folks uh, that were having to deal uh, with all these migrants who were, were being dumped in their communities, they had no way of dealing with them. And one of them offered up an idea. They said, they're going to start busing them to San Antonio, Texas. I said, don't do that. I got a better idea. Let me take charge of this situation. <laughs> the next week, we begin busing them to Washington, D.C. So during the entirety of Joe Biden's presidency, not once has he bothered himself to come to the border and see the crisis that he himself created. So I decided I'm going to take the border to Joe Biden in Washington, D.C. And suddenly, after bus, after bus, after bus, Mayor Bowser in Washington, D.C. said they cannot handle this. And they were calling on the National Guard in Washington, D.C. And they were, were begging the president for help, which he's declined every single time. But it shows that they're dealing with a trickle of what we deal with every single day and are incapable of handling it. And then we were only busing people to Washington, D.C. And out of literally nowhere, for no reason, the mayor of New York started criticizing me for busing people to New York City. And that continued for a week, and we denied that we were ever busing people there, but he would not stop criticizing me for it. And so I thought, you know what? If I'm going to take the criticism, I'm going to take the credit. <laughs> so uh, we are, we're showing America, actually showing the world, 
what's going on with the, the illegal immigration process because we have inundated New York City uh, with these illegal migrants and, and they cannot deal with it whatsoever. New York City uh, obviously is the home of the media world and, and whereas before it was only Fox News that was covering this, now every news channel has to cover this and they are seeing the chaos that has been caused by the Biden administration. Well, I got news for New York. I got news for Washington, D.C., as well as the rest of the country. We are not done yet. There are more cities on our list. And we will keep this just as good. And let me just close with this. I'm going to close the same way that we began. If you can recall the first thing that you did after I spoke to you, you said you were proud to be an American. And you are. And I know that some of you that may even be more proud to be a Texan than an American. But here's what we need to understand. There are people in this state that do not feel that way. There are people in this state who do not believe that America is the greatest country in the history of the world. We see that in part by what some schools are allowing to be taught in their schools with regard to this critical race theory, where they are, are, are using their school program to teach students to view each other through the lens of race. Well, that's contrary to what Martin Luther King Jr. taught us. And that is, we're not to be judged by the color of our skin. We're to be judged by the content of our character in the United States of America. Well, I signed two laws this past session, the special session, that bans critical race theory in every subject, in every grade, in every public school across the entire state of Texas. <laughs> let me be clear, we will not use your taxpayer dollars to fund our schools, to teach our students to hate each other or to hate our country. We need to be educating our students exactly why and how the United States of America did become the greatest country in the history of the world. That's what we're going to support. And I want to thank you for being a part of that because we will not allow the leftist agenda to hijack this state. And winning that battle begins on November the 8th. We must go vote. We must win. We must keep Texas, Texas, the best state and the greatest nation in the history of the world. God bless you all, and God bless the great state of Texas. show you that a pledge is more than just spoken words. Uh, I'm going to write it down in hard copy uh, on this uh, Texas size compact right here. of the Heritage Ranch Republican Club. Okay, listen, Governor, I'm a guy that has a little bit of uh, high blood pressure and you got me all pumped up here. But everything you said rings true with all of us. In fact, uh, I've got several people out here, name on a list, who wants to drive the bus for you. Okay? So if you need any more bus drivers, we got some folks out here that will drive the bus. We believe in you and everything you've done and are doing. And most importantly, we are extremely honored by your presence here. So thank you so much for that. Saul, thank you for your, your, uh, all of your work and contribution 
especially on this compact, which will positively affect us. Did you, did you have something you want to say? I, I did. Before, before we end, if I could just uh, officially, our organization voted to endorse Governor Abbott for re-election, and I just wanted to present this endorsement plaque. <laughs> So uh, we have a little something for both Saul and the governor. Um, now the lady that wrapped these is in the audience and she will have a stroke if we tear these open. So <laughs> we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to show a picture. Uh, governor, we are, we are giving you, uh, and Saul, a couple of our uh, special cups of coffee. We hope you're a coffee drinker every morning. And so I just want to but well, I just want to say one thing about this. So you put your normal brew in these cups, uh, but you might want to add a little more sugar because in these cups, it's going to be pretty stout when you drink that coffee, okay? Uh, so uh, the uh, governor is going to move back uh, and uh, will be in the library. We will take photos, as I said, by table. And uh, Ben and Clayton and uh, where's my... Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, Mark, uh, along with the six registrars, by the way, our registrars, they do everything. I mean, not only do they process you through, you know, tour guide, the registrars, uh, if the governor was late today, I was going to have him come up here and do a little dance routine for you, so uh, I can count on them. Uh, I also, while the governor is still here, every time the governor comes here, uh, we always have to go into overflow condition, uh, which we have done again, and we don't ever want to forget those folks who sit back in the back room but are so much a part of what we do. I know that, I know that means a lot of people. Finally, uh, with the governor, I would just say this. I think we could get him back here again if we did him a huge applause. And I know you know how to do that.